Hello friends, in the previous session what we have done is we have concluded the discussion on superposition theorem. With that we can move to the next concept as per the uh, topics which I have included which is going to be the source transformation. Alright, so the next couple of lectures will be on this concept which is called source transformation. Now before starting with source transformation we should identify what are practical sources all right so in practical independent sources you will have your voltage source and you will have the current source so let's start with the voltage source all right so what was the definition which i told about the ideal voltage source let us start with the ideal voltage source all right so there is ideal voltage source so i've told you an ideal voltage source is a voltage source which irrespective of the current will always give you a terminal voltage of V all right so for example I connect here 1 ohm all right and let this be say 9 volts the current will be equal to 9 divided by 1 equal to 9 amps all right so the current will be 9 amps all right so let me connect another thing here let me connect 1 milli ohm all right 1 milli ohm is 10 power 1 into 10 power minus 3 ohms so this 9 volt in this case the current will be 9000 amperes it's a huge amount of current all right and now let me further reduce this and finally i what i do is that i connect the 9 volt source to a short circuit that means i'm making the resistance equal to zero now here there is a problem as per the definition of the ideal voltage source this particular voltage should be equal to plus or minus 9 volt but however if you use ohm's law here we will get V is equal to the current into zero equal to zero and I is going to be a very very high value now this is a problem here this 9 volt cannot be equal to the zero volt right 9 is not equal to zero then what happens here it means that <coughs> our uh, our ideal voltage source argument has broken down here I have always told you these ideal concepts or linear concepts are holding only to a particular level all right that means there is something which has come into play here which is destroying our ideal voltage concept all right so let us see what is this now in the real life in real life if you pass 9000 amperes through a battery this 9 volt is a battery right it would heat up tremendously in fact it would burst even with that 9 ampere it's going to heat all right so in a real scenario due to the, when the current is high the heat generated is also going to be very high and what you are going to notice is that the terminal voltage let me call this voltage across the resistance as the terminal voltage the terminal voltage will no longer be equal to the source voltage in fact the terminal voltage will be less than the source voltage all right so let me put this vs here so this is vs all right this is vt and this is going to be vs now just don't take it blindly i'm going to add something in between so terminal voltage is going to be less and heat is getting generated so which circuit element can do that you are having a voltage and when that travels through the circuit it is getting dropped somewhere and the output which you get is less than the input and you know that this element is also getting heated up so clearly the non-linearity here is caused due to the element which is the resistor now the beauty of all these things is that i know that i am having a problem here all right and I don't want to lose my concept of this ideal voltage source. So what I can do is that let my ideal voltage source stay here. All right, the no, ideal voltage source is going to be the ideal voltage source. But the problem which I am facing here, I will model it as a resistor. The heating effect and the voltage drop will be shown by this particular resistor. And let me call this as RS. All right, this is RS. And this is going to be the load which I am going to connect across the terminals of my source and this is called the load resistance now what is the meaning of this this particular area here let me just change the color a bit yeah this particular VS is the ideal source VL is the ideal source alright but this entire package as a whole is what the load sees right 
the load does not know whether it's an ideal source or anything it is just coming and connecting it to your source and your source has a internal resistance all right this rs is called an internal resistance all right so this entire box becomes your practical source why it is the practical source because we have introduced the concept of the internal resistance let us <coughs> uh, go a little into a little bit more depth in this concept here all right now let us take a simple example here now so for example i am having a 12 volt battery all right i am having a 12 volt battery it has some internal resistance rs i don't know what that is all right and what is given is that when the current equal to zero that means i am putting an open circuit here the terminal voltage is equal to 12 volt it is well and good right why because this is the terminal voltage vt no current is flowing there is nothing dropped across this resistor the entire 12 volt is going to come through the vt another information which is given is that when the current is 100 amperes the terminal voltage is 11 volts all right so i will just put that this concept here it is 11 volts and the current which is flowing is 100 amperes so what will the value of rs rs value will be equal to the potential difference between these two so it is 12 minus 11 divided by 100 equal to 1 divided by 100 and that is going to be equal to 0 0.010 ohm. so with these two information what i have found i have found out the value of rs which is the internal resistance of the source which is equal to 0 0.01 ohm. all right so if i have to i'm sorry i was practicing something practicing something else yeah okay so i have my ideal source here which is my good old 12 volt battery and the culprit i am going to put which i have calculated here it is the 0 0.01 ohm internal resistance it's not a culprit in fact it helps us to explain all the concepts like the heating effects and all but anyway all right so this is my practical source so this is my practical source so this is what you find in reality and i can connect anything here i can connect any load resistance here let me just show that also so this will be my load resistance now actually what is a load a load is something which draws current from the uh, source to dissipate or to rotate based on what it does all right so load is something which draws current from the source all right now let this terminal voltage be now vt let us put some graphs all right this current is il because these two currents are going to be same it is named IL because it is called the load current and these two elements are in series and therefore we can put IL here also. Alright. Now, what we can do now is we can make some graphs. Alright. First, let me make a graph between all right, the terminal voltage VT and the load current IL. Alright. So, let us see what we get. Now, when the load current is 0, alright, when the load current is 0, the terminal voltage will be equal to the source voltage you can just put a kvl and see if you want so minus 12 plus 0 into 0 0.01 plus vt equal to 0 that means vt equal to plus 12 volt all right so when the current is equal to 0 this is going to be 12 volts all right now i'm going to decrease my resistance we start with an open circuit and for defining the characteristic we decrease our resistance till it becomes a short circuit now if this becomes a short circuit the rl is going to be immaterial so the only resistance in the circuit is the 0.01 ohm right so what will be the current during that time it will be 12 divided by 0 0.01 which is 1200 amperes a huge current so when the voltage is zero when the voltage is zero the current value is going to be 1200 amperes and because we are dealing with linear circuit analysis you can just join it with a straight line all right so if i were to put a general equation for this particular uh, circuit if i write a k wheel here i will get minus 12 plus il into 0 0.01 plus vt equal to 0 all right therefore to find terminal voltage vt at every point of IL, all I have to do is convert this equation like this, and I get this expression. All right. Now, 
Now let us just uh, reverse the graph. Now we are what we are going to do is we are going to find the value of currents. So this is my I L, all right, and this is my V L, all right. Now <coughs> when there is a short circuit here, when there is a short circuit, you know that that is the time when maximum current is going to flow. So let us name this current as I L S C, which is I load current during short circuit. And what is that value? That value will be equal to the source voltage I L S C source voltage divided by the R S right the source resistance. So it will be the voltage divided by the R S. All right. Let me call this as R S here. This is R S. All right. And what will be the next point? All right. The next point will be when the current value is zero or in the open circuit condition. All right. So in the open circuit condition, the V T at the open circuit condition will be nothing but the source voltage. So that this V T O C, V T at open circuit will be equal to the source voltage. So these are the extreme positions of the circuit, and you can put the graph like this. Now, all these individual points here are obtained for various resistances. So this particular graph is obtained when R L is varying from zero to an open circuit. And let me call a short circuit to an open circuit. All right. So I hope you have understood what is a practical voltage source. The ideal voltage source was just a simple voltage source, and a practical voltage source is an ideal voltage source. Connected with a series resistor, RS, and this is called the internal resistance. Right. So this is your now onwards. This is going to be our practical voltage source. On the similar lines, let us take a current source here. All right. Let us take a current source. This is an ideal current source, which is called IS. All right. I am putting a resistor here, R. All right. So what does the ideal ideal current source tell? Whatever be the voltage here, whatever be the voltage here, it will give the same current through the resistor. But if I make the resistance large enough, you note that the current is going to drop down. The current is going to drop down. That means the current seen by the load resistance will drop when R is going to increase. Now why should it drop like this? It means that there must be some element in parallel with the circuit which is taking the excess current. All right. So, therefore, ideal practical current sources, practical current sources, in the same lines of uh, the practical voltage source are represented like this. You are having an ideal current source, and you are having a resistance R P, and then you are having your load resistance. So. This particular portion, which I am marking in the rose color, all right. This is going to be your practical current source. Okay. I hope you have understood this thing. Let me summarize everything here. Uh, let me summarize everything in one particular drawing here. All right. So this is your ideal voltage source. All right, and this is going to be your practical voltage source. So this is going to be your practical voltage source with the series resistance. This is going to be your ideal current source. Ideal current source. Let me call this as Vs. Vs. This is the ideal current source I S, and the practical current source is something like this R P and I P. All right. So this is how you do all these things. Now, uh, in the next session, what we will do is that we will learn how to transform a practical voltage source into a practical current source, and vice versa. And that concept is what is called. Source transformation. I am taking this in the next lecture because I feel that this particular lecture has become a little bit long, and I hope that uh, 
I will be able to explain it much better when I make a shorter video of the source transformation as an exclusive video. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this lecture and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.